Hi guys, we're back. And this time we're gonna be giving you guys 26 carnival cruise tips for first time cruisers. Tip number one, don't double tip at the bar. Remember you're paying the 18% gratuity on each one of your drinks if you do not have the drink package. So remember, you don't have to tip every time you get a drink because it's already included. Okay, so tip number two is gonna be have your required boarding documents. So that's gonna include your boarding pass, which Carnival likes for you to have printed out. And then you're gonna need your either your passport or your ID and your birth certificate. And they like, I believe here in the state of Tennessee, they call it the short form. I'm not sure what they call it everywhere else but it's not the birth certificate that has your feet on it. It's just your regular birth certificate. So those are the documents that you're gonna to need to board the cruise ship. Okay guys, tip number three is have a pre-cruise hotel. Uh, we always recommend that you go in a day before because you never know what could happen. A missed flights, um, wreck on the highway, anything could delay you from getting to the cruise port. And if you don't make it there on time, by the time they sail away, they will leave you. So we always recommend to book a pre-cruise hotel, some cheap hotel close to the cruise port. Tip number four is go ahead and book the cabin that you want up front. Don't rely on upgrades. This last time Carnival didn't even send us an email to get an upgrade. So if you want a balcony cabin, just go ahead and book the balcony cabin. Um, because if you change your mind later on, those rooms might not even be available. Or like I said, they might not even send you an email to do an upgrade. So just go ahead and get the room you want up front. Tip number five is do your online check-in two weeks before sailing. This is where you're gonna choose your boarding time. You're gonna print off your boarding passes, your luggage tags, and you're also gonna set up your onboard account. Tip number six is pack enough clothes. Um, what I usually do uh, pack is two clothes per day. Um, one for import or on the ship, and then one outfit for dinner. Um, and then I sprinkle in some sleepwear and some um, swimwear in there. And make sure you pack those clothes for formal night. Yes, formal night for sure. Tip number seven is don't forget your lanyards, your luggage tag holders, and any other accessories that you may need. Um, tumblers are great for um, keeping your drinks cold throughout the day. I know Dee Dee always brings her tumbler. She has two different ones. Um, lanyards, you need that for your key card. Um, and then also your luggage tag holders. You don't want to use just the paper to staple together on your luggage tag. You want to make sure you get a luggage tag holder to hold that in place because as they're throwing around everybody's luggage, you don't want yours to get um, accidentally torn off and then you have to go down and look in the pile of luggage to find your piece of luggage. Tip number eight, Wi-Fi package. Now, this is totally personal preference. Are you going to need to be getting online and doing things while you're on the ship? That's what you have to ask yourself. We have kids who are still in school, so we have to communicate with them while we're gone. So we always get the Wi-Fi package. We're looking at the security cameras while we're gone. We're, you know, communicating with our kids via Instagram or some type of social media app like that. We're checking our bank balances, our credit card balances. So we're just doing those type of things. So we always get the Wi-Fi package. Yeah, for us being a couple, you don't have to both get the Wi-Fi package if you don't want to. Usually what we do is we get Didi the good Wi-Fi package so we can check everything we need to, and then I just have the social media. Um, but it's a good way to communicate with loved ones um, through one of the apps um, that they have on your, that you have on your phone. All right, guys, the ninth tip is how much cash to bring. Um, we usually bring about $200 worth of cash. We have most of it in small bills so that we can tip the porter and buy small uh, souvenirs. And then we have the rest in big just in case we need it and stuff. All right, the 10th tip is join the Facebook group for your sailing. So what you're gonna wanna do is go into the go into Facebook and you're gonna type in the date and the ship of your sailing. So for instance, we would type in Carnival Celebration June 2nd through 9th, 2024. Usually there's a Facebook group already created. You wanna join that Facebook group 
because usually they have a lot of fun stuff going on within the group well set up for you for your sailing so they'll have like slot pools bar crawls um, I know sometimes they do like gift exchanges. I know around Christmas time, some of the groups do like ornament exchanges. So if you want to go and just pre-meet people who are going to be on your selling, joining the Facebook group is a great way to do that. All right, guys. The next tip, number 11, is there's a new limit to the food order in the dining room. And what I mean by that, it used to be you could order as much as you want, it, want to. Now... Once you order two things, the third thing is at an extra fee. Entrees. Entrees. So if you order two entrees, the third entree would be for a fee. Um, what's the fee? I believe it's $5. Yeah, 5 or $6 or something like that. But it didn't used to be there. Now it is. So still two entrees is really good because you get the appetizer and all that. But do know that you can't go in if somebody's told you that they used to be on, they've been on the cruise before. And you can order all the entrees you want. That's not the case anymore. And this just cuts down on food waste. Yeah. Tip number 12 is pack a carry-on bag. So we always make sure that we bring like our medications, um, stuff that you're going to need immediately or stuff that you'll need if your bag gets lost in the unfortunate, you know, if unfortunate accident happens and your bag gets lost. So Marcus uses a CPAP machine, so he brings his CPAP in the carry-on because he doesn't want it getting thrown around in his regular luggage. Make sure you put your boarding documents in your carry-on bag. Do not put your boarding documents in your checked luggage because you will not be going on a cruise that day if you do. Nope. If you plan on bringing wine aboard the cruise ship, because you are allowed to do that, your wine needs to be in your carry-on bag and not in your checked luggage. If you put it in your checked luggage, they're going to confiscate it. Um, bring a change of clothes just in case your luggage doesn't get there in time for you to go to dinner. If you like to get in the pool, you know, before sail away or whatever, bring you a swimsuit. Um, we like to put our charging banks in there and extra phone cords. So just anything that you would need immediately, put in your carry-on bag. Yeah, because once they put those the luggage un under the ship, you're not going to be able to get to it until they bring it to you. So anything you think you may need the first day, I would put in on my in my uh, carry-on bag. Yes. All right. The next tip is download the Carnival Hub app prior to your sailing. And then once you get on the ship, that's where all of your information is going to be. It's going to tell you where your shows are. You'll be able to go in and look at the menus for the bars and the restaurants. You'll be able to make your dinner reservations there. So the Carnival Hub app is going to be sort of like your lifeline. And you do not need the Wi-Fi package to use it. So make sure you download the app. Number 14, put your phone into airplane mode. It's probably a good practice to go ahead and do it as soon as you get onto the ship because you can use the um, ship's Wi-Fi for your app and if you have purchased the Wi-Fi package then you're able to use uh, the ship's Wi-Fi but you don't want to be um, going out to sea and not be in airplane mode because you will get charged a lot of fees and char uh, charges that way. All right the next tip is prepay your gratuities. Now, when you prepay your gratuities, the price of the gratuities is going to be added into your cruise fare. So when you're making your payments on your cruise, all of that is just going to be added in there. If you don't prepay your gratuities on the last night before you get off the ship, they're going to put a bill in your mailbox for those gratuities. So it's best to just prepay them so everything's paid for and you don't have to worry about it. You can just have a good time on the ship. All right, guys. Tip number 16 is do not use your debit card at the port um, there are various reasons why but we don't you would not want your identity stolen or your credit card information stolen so there's two things you can do this is where your cash comes in if you have small bills you can um, pay for certain things at the port or have a credit card because you can call the credit card company and they can uh, help you with the fraud um, but if you do it by the debit card, then you have to wait until that stuff falls off. So it's a good, you know, practice to either have cash or credit card when you go to any port um, on a cruise. All right. So the next tip is what's not included in your cruise fare. So that's going to be your taxes and your port fees, your um, 
gratuities, your specialty dining, none of that is included, your drink package. So these are all things that you're gonna have to pay extra for or pay for outside of your cruise fare. All right, so the next tip is gonna be pre-purchase everything before boarding the ship. And I mean like before your sale date, before boarding the ship. You're gonna wanna get your Wi-Fi, your drink package, your specialty dining, your excursions. You're gonna wanna prepay for all of that because one, in most cases, it's gonna be cheaper. Especially like the drink package and the Wi-Fi is gonna be cheaper if you buy it before you get on the ship. With your excursions, if you wait, they may sell out. So just go ahead and buy everything beforehand. And then once you get on the ship, it's like everything is already done. You're not having to spend any extra money. You can just enjoy your vacation. The next tip, number 19, is buy travel insurance. And I know, I know most people want to use their regular insurance that they pay for with their job, but it's not the same because with travel insurance, not only are you getting the health insurance if you um, something happens, but you're also getting, if something happens and you can't go, you have a chance of getting some of your money back. It's all extras that travel insurance are specific for cruises. Um, so we recommend that everyone gets travel insurance. Tip number 20. Book all the reservations you need as soon as you get on board. Um, a lot of the shows are gonna sell out, or if you want a specific time, you need to go ahead as soon as you get on and try to get that time if you want, it's a show that you wanna see, or if you didn't get the booking and dining before you got on and you, you got on board and you're like, oh, that looks good, I wanna go there, you need to sit down, go ahead and do your reservations on the app so that you can get a time that you would like because they fill up really, really fast. All right, the next tip is arrive back to the ship an hour before you're supposed to be back on the ship, ship time. When you look in the Carnival app, it's gonna show you ship time because when you go to certain islands, ship time and island time may not be the same time zone. There may be an hour difference. So it's best if you have like a watch or something that's not um, like an Apple watch that's gonna switch times to the time zone you're in. But just make sure that you get back before the all on board time because they will leave you. Um, if you book a carnival excursion, they'll try their best to stay and wait for you. But at some point, the ship does have to leave. So just make sure that you're getting back on time. Next tip is let the cruise line know if you have any special accommodations. Um, I am a travel agent, so I do contact the cruise line and let them know that Marcus uses a CPAP so he needs an extension cord. If you have any food allergies, let the cruise line know so they can make accommodations for you. If you have anything like that, just let them know so they will make the accommodations. Tip number 23, go straight to do your mustard drill. Um, now they have you do it as soon as you get on the ship, so it's cut back on a lot of people who weren't doing it. But well, I, I don't think people really realize the ship can't leave port until everyone has done the mustard drill. So if you could, just go ahead, as soon as you get on, before you go check everything out, go to your muster drill station, take care of that uh, stuff, so now you can enjoy your cruise. And your muster station will be listed on your boarding pass, and then once you get your sign and sell card, it'll also be listed on there, so you'll know where to go. Tip number 24, go to Elegant Night. If you're, if you're like me, I really wasn't into the dressing up and all that kind of stuff. But once I attended the Elegant Night, we got dressed up. It really made it a lot more special. Um, it kind of changed things from being always relaxed, wearing whatever during the day, um, to actually dressing up and feeling like we're uh, doing something special. They usually have a better menu at dinner. So uh, go ahead and live a little. Go to Elegant Night. Tip 25 is controversial. The Cheers Package. And let me tell you, even with between the two of us, we're kind of split on it. Um, but I see both sides. Um, what the drink package, cheers package is, you get unlimited drinks, but your alcoholic drinks, you get 15 per day, all for a set price. At the time of this um, recording, it was $59.99 um, per day per person. Do you have anything, Sarah? Yes. Now, if you are over the age of 21, both people in the room are over the age of 21, then both people in the room have to purchase the drink package. Now, for me, 
I like the freedom of the drink package. I don't have to worry about what my bill is going to look like at the end of my cruise because of what I've spent on drinks. I also like the freedom of if I order a drink and I don't necessarily like it, I can just get something else and I, I don't feel like I've wasted $15 or whatever it is. But on top of the alcohol drinks, you also get the specialty coffees. You get um, sodas, you get bottled water. Um, what else? I think, oh, you get Milkshake. like Gatorades, Milkshake. milkshakes. So it's not just the alcoholic drinks. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about purchasing the Cheers package. Yeah, I think that's something like, if you're like me, a budgeter, um, I don't drink a lot. Um, normal um, so going on there you know you might think oh, well, I'm only going to have one or two drinks that's alcoholic drinks if you add in all the other drinks that you may want um, it probably would be a good thing to go ahead and get the drink package uh, we've done it both ways and just the peace of mind of it um, of getting a drink package and not worried about what we're buying extra um, really helps us for our cruise experience all right, so tip number 26 is try to avoid making any changes to your booking. Now, since the pandemic is over, Carnival has kind of cracked down on the free changes that they used to let you make. Everything comes with a fee now. So if you know that your Aunt Barbara is not the most reliable person, you might not want to be cabin mates with Aunt Barbara because she's not going to pay her money then you're going to have to pay a room change fee or a person fee, a person change fee. So know who your cabin mate is going to be. Pick the room that you want up front so there's no changes to be made so you're not having to pay any fees to Carnival. All right, guys, that has been our 26 tips for first-time Carnival cruisers. Drop down in the comment section and let us know if you have any questions. Also, drop down in the comment section and let us know if you have any tips for first-time cruisers. Until next time, bye! Peace.